will go live kiran uh, good afternoon friends it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you all for this uh, ninth distinguished lecture series on energy efficiency the one which we have started some time back to bring you some thought leaders on energy efficiency to share with you their views and also answer some of your uh, clarifications we are privileged to have uh, dr jayaram vardaraj managing director of lg equipments limited uh, to be here with us and uh, deliver the distinguished uh, lecture today dr jayaram vardaraj is the managing director of lg equipment limited and uh, he has transformed a family company at the national level into a global organization currently lg is number 7 globally in terms of uh, the compressed air uh, business the lg is working under the leadership of dr jayaram vardaraj in becoming number 2 globally in compressed air business by the year 2027 under his leadership uh, lg has expanded both geographically as well as in different sectors it's uh, uh, prevalent in many countries in middle east europe and usa and also expanded into sectors such as textile polymer uh, mechanical equipments and uh, and uh, consumer appliances uh, dr jayaram varadraj has a unique uh, leadership methodology uh, he works towards both uh, uh, manufacturing excellence as well as uh, corporate social responsibility he considers both of them uh, uh, to be symbiotic to the growth of the organization as well as the, the country dr jayaram varadraj happens to be an alumni of george washington university and uh, university of michigan having said that uh, dr jayaram varadraj has uh, several achievements and uh, contributions to his credit under his leadership lg has won the uh, deming prize for manufacturing excellence and tqm initiative in 2019 the coveted deming prize the first time a compressed air company could win this prize outside of uh, outside of japan in the last uh, last 60 years also dr jayaram vardaraj has been very passionate about innovation innovation which is breakthrough as well as uh, frugal in nature he is one of the most sought after businessman for being uh, uh, part of the directorship of uh, several uh, uh, companies as well as uh, uh, non profit uh, organizations he has also been very actively involved in cii he has been the past chairman of uh, uh, cii tamil nadu and also a member of uh, uh, cii southern region a very strong technocrat dr jayaram uh, vardaraj owns four patents in the fields of food processing uh, bells uh, compressors and consumer appliances Uh, we are privileged to have you sir and without much further ado i leave the stage to uh, dr jayaram vardra dr jayaram vardra thank you very much mr venkatagiri thank you for having me over this uh, evening uh, on this very uh, prestigious platform uh, to talk about energy and its consequences to the world uh, i'd like to thank everyone who are participating in this webinar I hope everyone and their family is safe uh, as we together fight through this uh, rather difficult times. And I think, as a country, we should be very proud. I think we have done a phenomenal job as uh, individual citizens of this nation in keeping this at bay uh, the way we have done. So, something that all of us can be very proud of. Uh, now, I want I. One of I'm not a big expert on energy, but you know we are in a business that makes machines that are not the most energy efficient. Compressed air as a utility is not a very efficient utility, and by virtue of that, and making compressors, uh, there is an acute sense of energy. Uh, I would call it stinginess in our company. Uh, we want to be as stingy as possible in the machines that we build. not only in their their footprint of uh, efficiency but the energy that we use to actually make the machines but when you talk about uh, energy i think there is a general tendency to kind of let the mind veer towards electricity right but i think energy is a much larger animal right uh, the yeah, energy is just the, at a at a very theoretical level is the capacity to do work right but it's a very very large envelope and electricity uh for many of you may know is only 19% of the total energy of this world right if you look at the energy that is burnt to produce all the forms of energy electricity produced is only 19% of that thermal which is used for in cars in processing in heating and in cooling Is a, is another big uh, uh, user of energy. Thermal energy is a big 
uh, form of energy that is used by this earth as you and I as human beings, we do a lot of that, right? And this larger definition of energy also includes very critical dimensions of water, things like water, where energy is used to deliver certain aspects of water. So, and this energy is a very, very big number, right? Uh, if you use the current price of electricity, average price of electricity between industry and households in India at seven rupees per kilowatt hour, the global value of energy is between 15 to 16 trillion dollars. That's the size of the energy that gets consumed in the process of creating energy, right? And the unfortunate part of that is only 30 to 40 percent of this 15 to 16 trillion dollars is actually put to use. The rest of it either goes in various forms of waste in the process of production of energy, in the process of transmission of energy, and the process of actually using the energy to get work done. So it's a very, very big cost. And it is a, and you look at most of our businesses, energy, we tend to measure energy only in electricity. But if you go back and look at measurement of your energy in your business, the consumption of energy in your business, it's a pretty significant number. You know, a lot of us look at some businesses have very low, like 2% or 3% of their revenue is energy and electricity. And they tend to think that, oh, my business has very low uh, energy footprint. But in reality, we have really not measured the entire energy footprint of our businesses. And if we do, we'll be quite surprised that a large percentage of our revenue is used up in consuming a lot of energy. And you look at our own, as individuals, you look at our own household bills progressively as we are going up the scale in our standard of living, our own, our own electricity bills are progressively going and we forget that we also have other forms of consumption of energy. We tend to look at energy only through the lens of electricity bill. But as individuals, if you step back and look at all the energy that you consume and the cost of that energy, it's, it's a pretty significant number, right? So both from a business point of view and as individuals, there is a tremendous economic sense to look at energy as a unit of consumption that needs to be very tightly managed from a cost point of view. Now, as a country and as Indians, our per capita consumption of energy is 90% is lower than what the per capita is in the US and 80% lower than what it is in China. Now, as we aspire to grow as a, as a nation, our standard of living, a quality of life, this per capita in consumption of energy is going to keep going up. And therefore, there is a need for us to be extremely cautious and careful in terms of how we control the consumption of energy. Now, that is on the economic side. You know, the economics of energy, the cost as it impacts our business, the cost as it impacts us as individuals. But there is a huge environmental impact on this almost frivolous path that we have gone over the last probably 100 years in terms of how we have consumed energy and taken it for granted. The consequences to the environment are, I mean, I don't have to come onto this platform and talk about it. There are health benefits to each of us, health benefits for our children, and definitely health benefits for the future, gen uh, health consequences for the uh, future generation. We, and this is something that we have taken this world, a world over the last hundred years, through our frivolous consumption of energy and various forms of energy, we have brought it to this level. And now there is a responsibility for us 
to clean it up and leave a better world for the future generation. And the good thing is, this is possible, right? And it's not it's not reached a point of no return. It is still doable. The Earth has uh, an extremely good way of healing itself, provided we allow it to heal, right? And it is possible. And we have seen it in in the months of April and May. You look at just when the Earth world came to a pause and a standstill. The way in which nature transformed itself and healed itself, we have seen so many examples that have been shared by people from all over the world of how pollutions have vanished, uh, wildlife has returned, you know, in so many instances. So it's, it's a very positive thing, very optimistic platform in which we are, we are working on. But we have a responsibility to contribute by being more responsible about the way we consume energy and the way we produce it, right? Now, there is a tendency that there is fossil fuel, which is the, the brown fuel that is causing a lot of the environmental issues. Then there is a move towards renewables, whether it is solar or whether it is wind, there's a big move, and the world has done a big shift. I mean, nowhere close to what is required. Still, uh, fossil fuel is close to 80 plus percent of the total energy that is uh, uh, produced in this world. Uh, and solar has come a long way, and it's around anywhere between 12 to 15 percent, in some countries, even higher than that. But irrespective of how the energy is is generated, I think it's important for us to look at consumption. Now, let us not take something that is abundant and we think it is cheap and clean, whether it is solar or whether it is wind, and consume it, continue to consume it in a very frivolous manner without taking cognizance of where we can conserve energy, how it is, how is it that we can explore various technologies and possibilities to conserve energy. Let me tell you, I mean, we talk about solar. You look at the amount of land that is required for setting up solar. Uh, it's a huge amount of land. And solar photovoltaic cells have an expiry date. So what's going, what's going to happen to those cells? They become e-waste. Are we going to then move from one level of environmental chaos to another level of environmental chaos? So it's important for us that irrespective of how we generate, how cleanly we generate energy, the conservation and a very, very judicious use of energy is very important for the future of this earth. Now, the health of the, health of the planet is very critical for us in terms of how we behave and our responsibility. And we cannot be selfish about this. And as we go forward, we need to look at these aspects of it deeply. Now, there are multiple levels through which energy savings, reduction in energy consumption, optimization of energy can happen. One is at obviously at a policy level by the government where they induce or encourage certain types of uh, behavior and they penalize certain other types of behavior so that the generation of electricity is clean and the consumption of electricity is prudent. Or I keep saying electricity, that you can imagine how all of us are conditioned to think energy is electricity. But energy I'm talking about, the right kind of energy production and the right prudent form of energy consumption. The second is the legal layer of actually legislating certain things that will prohibit certain practices. The third, which is most important, and I think this is where the biggest change is going to come, is our own behavior as individuals, where we and manage businesses, as well as people who are professionals work playing various areas. Look around us, there is always opportunity for us to, to save energy, whether it is uh, sensors for activating lights or fans or uh, uh, air conditioning, whether it is looking at measurements of 
uh, electricity consumption per unit of your output, looking, doing a detailed analysis of which are the contributing factors, which are the, the machines and the utilities that contribute to your, uh, the footprint of the product, of your production first. And every machine or every output that you do has an energy output. Now, can look at, measure those energy uh, profile of your product and say, what is it that you can do to bring that energy profile, make it lighter, make it smaller. And it's a constant opportunity in our own company. We have, as our power consumption, in spite of close to 30, 40% growth, our electricity consumption, I wouldn't say energy, electricity consumption has been flat for the last probably five to six years, right? Now, this is not by accident. We have a team of people, extremely enthusiastic set of people who take it as a life mission. This is this cannot be done by setting KRAs for people. A KRA is a mercenary contract, right? Energy, energy consumption has to be managed by a deep emotional connect that we all should develop the responsibility that we have to leave a healthy planet for the next generation. I, I, so this is not about KRAs. This is not about gold sheets. This is about fundamentally as human beings, our responsibility to the earth that we live in. This is not about responsibility to the company or to your manager. It's your responsibility to the earth that you live in. And you look around you, there are opportunities every day for you to improve. And that's the best part. This is not very difficult to do. It is very easy to do. It just requires consciousness. It requires a certain level of commitment. And we will definitely, this can happen. So these are some of my thoughts and upper level, you know, the kind of emotions that I would like, wanted to share with you. I'd be very happy to take questions and clarify for some of the thoughts that I've mentioned. Thank you very much again for having me. I wish that every one of you uh, take it upon yourself that energy consumption is a responsibility that all of us have. It's not about companies. It's about us as individuals. And if we take that up seriously, we can leave behind a very healthy planet for the future generation. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Dr. Thanks for your address. Uh